A new Spring Boot 3.4 release is, is out, uh, and with it comes in, uh, improved support in projects that build on it, right? So this is, uh, these projects were waiting for Spring Boot, uh, not the other way around, uh, Spring Boot wasn't waiting for them. Uh, so these projects waited for Spring Boot 3.4 to, to come out, uh, and uh, they provide support or are compatible with. And, uh, you know, frankly, I wanted to talk about a release uh, that actually, you, the astute will notice, came out just a day or two before Spring Boot 3.4 did. Uh, but which is also compatible with it because we've tested against snapshots and everything, uh, and that is Spring AI 1.0 M4. So if if you've been following my uh, videos of late, you know that I've been following the uh, Spring AI evolution for you know more than a year now, right? We've been talking about this amazing, amazing project, and this new release is a huge leap forward. So we've got uh, you know first of all, I like when they start any conversation with we've squashed most of the reported bugs and uh, bring significant enhancements across various areas. Yes, yes please, this. I wanna know that things are achieving and reaching stability and we're converging on a stable version of the code and we're having new features in the meantime. So we've got uh, Amazon Bedrock Converse support, which provides a unified API uh, for the AI chat models that Amazon offers. We've got function and calling improvements, uh, including uh, function callback types. So you have this builder that you can use to create a function callback and just define the description manually, define a lambda for the function, and describe the input type. We have a thing called a tool context that you can have injected in a by function, for example. So you would, you would say, here's the request, here's the tool context, and it's gonna produce this response, right? Request and then context, that's an optional secondary uh, you know, injection. Otherwise, you just use a regular function, right, if you don't want the context. Uh, that gives you context associated with the request, nice. Uh, we also have the uh, foundational bits for the new tool mapping annotation in M5. So that's super good, right? Imagine that, like light control, what is this? So a string room name, boolean on, arguments that put, oh, nice, okay. So that's really, really powerful, right? And uh, how would that work? Light control, new light control, create a chat client, uh, describe the function, target object is that, the method is called light control and it takes these parameters, aha. So you can see how this is, how we can automatically infer this for you based on annotations on the component model. Super duper nice. That's not here yet, but it's coming, okay? Uh, what else? We've got support. Oh, these are for additional features. Consult the function callback documentation, which covers schema type conversion, uh, custom response handling and ob object mapping, support for generic input types using parameterized type reference, automatic schema generation for, from Java types, including Jackson annotation support, uh, and guidelines for writing effective function descriptions and error handling. And by the way, kind of dovetailing right into that, there's improved Kotlin support in... Uh, Spring AI M4. Um, thanks, Sebastian, for, for doing this work. Uh, I also helped with the, uh, the chat client. We've got, uh, oh, look at that, nice Kotlin syntax and support for registering functions. I love this, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. We have different resources, and we have preliminary support for the advanced and modular RAG practice, right? And so there's many different papers, including modular RAG, uh, transferring, RAG transforming RAG systems into Lego-like reconfigurable frameworks and retrieval augmented generation for large language models, a survey. Uh, thanks to our community legend, Thomas Vitale, for leading this effort. Uh, there's now some key building blocks in this mechanism, in this, uh, in this uh, release. Uh, Pre-retrieval components. Query transformer transforms queries in, to improve uh, retrieval effectiveness, e.g. translation and rewrites. A query expander expands single queries into multiple variations for broader, broader context capture. Orchestration components. Query router routes queries to appropriate retrievers based on metadata and semantic analysis. Retrieval components. Document retriever. Core interface for retrieving relevant documents. Document joiner combines results from multiple retrievers and queries. Post-retrieval components, document compressor, uh, reduces docu document content while preserving key information. Document ranker, reorders documents by relevance. Document selector, uh, filters, retrieve documents based on criteria. And augmentation, so we have a query augmenter which enhances queries and retrieved context. Uh, and contextual query augmenter, which is the default implementation focused on document context integration. So this is a building on our modular RAG components. The Retrieval Augmentation Advisor provides an implementation to get you started and provides a linear RAG flow. So we create the query, uh, creates query from user text using prompt template, query transformation, applies query transformers chain, query expansion, creates multiple queries via query expander, document retrieval, routes and executes parallel retrievals, document integration, joins results from all sources, Context <clears throat> augmentation enhances queries with retrieved context. 
wow, this is a lot more sophisticated. So you might recognize uh, the you know question and answer advisor. Well, this is like the uh, retrieval. Wow, this is much cooler. This is well, look at that retrieval augmentation advisor, custom rag advisor. How cool is that? Look how nice that is. You just programmatically build this up, providing the implementations. Uh, you know, batteries included, or you can write your own. And uh, yeah, wow, that's amazing. Uh, other improvements, you know, Azure OpenAI SDK upgraded to version 12, Spring AI features, Olama features, uh, yeah, vector store and embedding improvements, uh, Oracle Coherent and Azure Cosmos, nice. Oh, that's really cool, actually. I like both of these for vector stores. Um, enhanced existing vector stores, open search, improved configuration structure, Chroma, uh, in introduced builder pattern for better initialization. Milvis added support for non-default databases. Azure provided the ability to match pre-existing field names and use of keyless authentication. Um, nice. And uh, yeah, thanks, uh, you know, refactoring, PRs, blah, blah, blah. Look at all these wonderful people. I love this, I love it so much, I just love it. Uh, I love it. Look at all these nice people. I mean, people from, these are, you know, these look like they're Chinese names, maybe not from China proper, but you know, they're, there are Chinese names. You got uh, here's Sebastian from from France. Uh, here's me uh, from production, and uh, people from, look at that. Elia, our own our own Elia from uh, the Spring team. Uh, Edu, hi buddy. Uh, Craig Walls, of course. This is an amazing release. Look at all these wonderful people from all around the world who have converged on this project to, to just do amazing things. Right? I'm ah so cool, so cool. So I'm a big fan. Um, but I'm also what I think is going to be sort of most obvious and most powerful are those retrieval, retrieval augmented generation uh, pipeline improvements um, and the integration and in the component model. So I, th I figured, why not look at the component model, okay? Uh, and in particular, this, uh, this function uh, callback. Okay, so let's go to a simple example here. I am going to create a chat client. This is gonna use OpenAI. Now I have in my environment, I have a property, Spring AI OpenAI API key. I've already specified this as an environment variable and it's expect, ex exported in my environment, and uh, you know it provides the configuration required to connect to OpenAI. I'm using OpenAI, but you can use anything that you want. Right? We have dozens of different starters for different models. Um, and uh, we've got a chat client. We're specifying the builder, specifying a function callback. The function callback, in turn, um, you know, I'm because I'm, remember what, what used to happen, and you can still do, I, I imagine, is you would have to create a function bean and give it a description. You say returns the weather for a given city, right? And then you return a bean of type function and uh, that returned a weather response given a uh, weather request. So in and out, right? And then you'd call this uh, whatever and return that and return this and, uh, and then uh, return that, right? So that, that works fine. And um, you, you could actually implement the logic here. So I could actually say, in this, in this example, I'm saying, give me the current weather for a given city, right? So let's say I, uh, I call this and I can return a new weather response, get rid of that. And, uh, and that's fine. I mean, this, this actually does kind of work. And uh, the only thing you have to remember is the name of the method, right? And that's where things get a little ugly because if you want to use that method, you then have to say default functions like that. And I don't like magic magic methods like that, it just makes me itch. So I'm very happy now that we have this more expressive and not, by the way, people would forget to provide this description in Spring. This is a Spring Framework annotation. It's been in Spring Framework uh, for since 4.0, right? A long, long time. Adds a textual description to bean definition derived from component or bean, okay? So that annotation there, it's, it's not part of Spring AI. There's nothing in Spring AI that we can do to determine whether you have forgotten to add this or not, right? Like there's plenty of reasons why you might define a bean of type function and not add this, and they have nothing to do with Spring AI, and so we can't like upfront validate that, right? But now with this builder, it's very clear what you're trying to do. We're trying to conf construct a function that can be used in the context of, of Spring AI's uh, function callback mechanism. Remember, Spring AI brings the patterns of AI engineering to your Spring code base, so your Spring. Uh, services and data and so on. So um, I want to give it the ability to call functions in my code base when it determines the need to do so. So I'm going to create a function callback, say describing the function as returns the weather for a given city, right? And you know the lambda is this right here. I can just uh, extract it out, right? And I can say weather like that, and then pass this in. Okay, there's my my uh, function name, 
and my weather, the, the actual Lambda in implementation, right? And the implementation is, you know, this is, this, I can also use uh, uh, Java method references, right? So if I could say uh, weather response, weather for, weather request, right? And then I return this, so return, voila. And uh, I can actually just say weather for, okay? So it'll be a WR, WR, and of course this can be a lambda, like that. And, uh, and this works just fine, right? And actually, I wonder if I could just do this. Yeah, look at that, that works fine too. So you can do that if you want, if that's more clear, but the idea is that you're building up this metadata object, which is very explicit. So now I've got this. I wonder what Spring AI sees when I do that. Oh, it knows, it knows the input type is weather request. Does it know what the, I guess the return type is clear from, the, from this method. I don't know, I, don't, I wonder if that works or not, or do I have to have a separate variable? Well, let's just try it, okay? So I've got a test over here, and I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna say, okay, chat client, give me the weather for the city of San Francisco. Now remember, OpenAI is, it has a cutoff date. It doesn't know everything all the time. It only knows what it knows up until the cutoff date. So it can't possibly know the weather for San Francisco right now, right? That's a contextual thing that uh, it's gonna need to be able to ask the real world for some sensory sort of information, right? From extra ambient information. And uh, I'm gonna give it the ability to do that by giving it this function. It can ask me for the weather for a particular city um, and I will return the, uh, the weather and I'm gonna hard code it. I'm gonna say if the city has the string San Francisco in it, then it's 68. Uh, otherwise it's 72, okay? That's a silly example. Maybe it's just a little uh, wishful thinking given how uh, unlikely it is that it's 72 in most of the country. But it, it's certainly always colder in San Francisco than in most of the country during warm weather, okay? And uh, let's just see if that works. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this test in this test here. I'll, I'll say, give me the weather for the city of San Francisco. I'll call it. It's gonna give a string back, you know, and the string should have a response that indicates it's talked to our custom function, right? So let's maybe put that in there. There you go, okay? So let's run this test. And we're gonna assert that it's 68. Nice, that worked, that surprises even me. That's really great, that's really, really good. Um, I was expecting it need to need the extra type information, but yeah, look at that. It actually, it just did the right thing there. So you can write your functions and then you can do the right thing and be very explicit about how you're registering them. And then this is nice and type safe. So I can just pass that into this default functions uh, thing. And of course, the support for doing the equivalent thing in Kotlin has gotten better as well. So a win all around. Really cool stuff. I hope you'll go start that spring that I own and try the bits out right now.